Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running. We're approaching the halfway point of 2023 and we thought it'd be a great time to do a shoe reflection review and basically look at the top five stable neutral shoes of the year thus far. So in doing so, we take into consideration a whole heap of data points. We have conversations with our staff downstairs, get some custom feedback, talk to our great referring partners, the podiatrists and physios out there, collate a whole heap of this information, look at where the shoes have come from to where they are today, and we will collate this top five and we will review them today. All right, before we jump in today's review, let's talk about what makes a stable neutral shoe a stable neutral shoe. So to give you some context, stable neutral as a category within our business makes up around 60 to 65% of our overall shoe sales. So therefore, it obviously speaks to a lot of runners out there. So when we're looking at stable neutral as a category, it is growing year on year and it's been the case now for the best part of half a decade. So technically speaking, if you happen to be a mild overpronator, neutral or a mild supernator, you can fall quite comfortably into this stable neutral category. Obviously, there's a, a number of factors we need to take into consideration like we do downstairs with all of our customers that come through the door. But then when you're looking at stable neutral and then we have that discussion around what is stability shoes, we know that stability is changing significantly um, each and every season. So therefore, how brands are executing their arch reports, we're finding that they are using different technologies and different techniques to be able to achieve that outcome, almost coming becoming their own slightly more stable version of a stable neutral category. And you can look at the Kayano Light, for example, and even look at what K ASICs are doing with the Kayano 30 coming in the next few months. So stay tuned for that one, of course. So we know brands are making alterations to their stability shoes, and therefore it's just making that stable neutral category probably more accessible than ever before. So when we're looking at this category today and how we've collected these top selection of shoes, we take into consideration a few key factors. Having conversations with our team members downstairs, guys and girls who run in these shoes uh, from uh, all their training uh, and also obviously wear them at work as well, but also what they've found to be successful fitting downstairs. Having conversations with our referring partners, podiatrists and physiotherapists, and getting an idea of what's worked for them and their clients is really, really important. And then we've taken that information into consideration with our top selections today. And also getting feedback from you, the customers. It's really, really important. So we, we get to have these conversations day in, day out downstairs. So getting an understanding of what has and hasn't worked has been really, really important for us. And we don't just that information we get, we don't actually just stop right here. We do pass this on to brands. So just know that if something has been successful or hasn't quite worked, we do pass this information on to the brands. And if it happens to be a consistent message, well, they will make alterations where, see, where they see fit. They don't just take that on board and give us a thumbs up. They do make changes if it's a significant amount of data coming in to justify a decision like that. The other thing too is we're taking into consideration where the shoes have come from. So what was their previous version like and where it is today? Today, or if it's a new shoe, where does it fit into this whole entire category? So it's a bit exciting. I always like a top selection uh, shoe review. Uh, we take, obviously, these reviews very, very seriously. And of course, there is a grain of salt. What we say isn't gospel. If it works for you, great. If it isn't, if you've got some other suggestions, we always love to hear from you, the running community. So without further ado, let's get stuck in today's shoe review. Let's start off with the most cushioned shoe in this top three. Now, we've got the Bondi 8 in my hand right here. Stats first, it is a formula offset, 31 in the heel, 27 through the forefoot. That's the same for men's and women's. The weight of the shoe is uh, pretty light, all things considered. It's a 306 grams for men's size 9, 255 grams for a ladies size 7. This shoe here, as I said, is extremely plush under the foot, very cushioned from entry right through to your release. And it has been a very popular shoe for a number of years, mainly due to the fact it has a rocker um, feel through the forefoot. So when you're rolling through mid starts to toe off, this shoe has an easy release, an easy exit, which makes... Jogging those easy Ks, extremely comfortable. It's available on wits, which is always a win too. With the Bondi 8 and where it's come from with the Bondi 7, now it has always been uh, in the top of conversation or topic of conversation for that max cushioned rocker shoe uh, for the last decade and no surprises this shoe is still the king and queen in that category we've seen a lot of other brands compete in this space New Balance more as it's glide ride just to name a couple however what we found with the Bondi 8 and why it's taken a big leap forward in, in overall success is probably more about where it's come from with the Bondi 6 and 7 that shoe was popular it was great served a purpose but probably wasn't as plush and as comfortable for for your running miles. It was 
great for walkers out there and not saying the eight isn't it's still very good however for the true runners who are looking for a max cushioned really stable ride the bondi 8 has been very very successful and looking at a couple of key factors is the the actual um, real estate under the shoe has increased ever so slightly we've got a little bit more surface area which is exactly why this shoe is successful it's got a big footprint nice high stack and you're going to get a lot of shoe and a lot of stab stable ride underneath the foot and the other thing too is um being that uh, it's a highly referred shoe from our podiatry partners and again we see this being successful with orthotics so if you have to be a person who has an orthosis and depending of the orthotic of course we, we do like to make sure they get fitted into the shoe correctly but 90% um, of the time the orthotic has no issues whatsoever fitting into the Bondi 8. If anything it's a little bit lower in the heel counter but that's okay we just adjust laces and away we go. So the shoe as I touched on very cushioned stable neutral shoe very very popular and we are really looking forward to obviously seeing what Hoka do in this space because they've set the bar very high with the Bondi 8. Second shoe in the selection is the Saucony Triumph 20. Now, we wouldn't have a top neutral shoes conversation if this guy wasn't in it. The feedback from the community has been overwhelmingly positive with regards to Triumph 20. It's a relatively versatile shoe for a cushion stable neutral offering. 275 grams in a men's size 9, 249 grams for a ladies size 7. This shoe is coming in pretty light in comparison to other shoes in this same conversation. 10 mil offset. 35 in the heel, 25 in the forefoot with your power run plus midsole. This shoe has been very fun to run in. It's great for your easy days, pounding the pavement out on the road. And it's also nice and snappy for those that want a shoe that could probably do everything and you can pick up the pace in this shoe very, very easily. Triumph 20 has been very popular. So how this shoe made it into our top selection? Well, when this shoe comes up in conversation, and I'm talking about our team members downstairs, there is always a smile on nearly every one of those guys who uses this shoe's face. I mean, when we're talking about Triumph 20, when it first came to market, where it changed from the Triumph 19, there was a few question marks around, okay, Saucony are now going to a 10 mil offset. They've had that eight mil drop for the best part of 10 years. And when on paper, they presented the Triumph 20 with a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop, a few of us started asking a few questions about, okay, what are they trying to achieve? That's a big change for those real pure super Coney or Saucony, pardon me, Triumph runners out there. It may be a statistic that might veer them away from this shoe, but it hasn't at all. Saucony had to be, it had to go to a 10 mil offset with this shoe because the power run PB change in regards to the overall density and the stack height if it was an 8 mil drop this shoe would bottom out a little bit too quickly so it's been extremely versatile I'm yet to see someone come back who hasn't got more than 700 kilometers in this shoe we've even had people come back and 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 hit a thousand k's and the shoe looks pretty good still great upper really conform fit available on widths and we've had great success fitting a variety of orthotics inside this shoe as well it has started to be referred more from a lot of podiatrists out there. Again, previously, maybe it was because the shoe was maybe not well as well known out in the market, but we're seeing a lot more podiatrists have great success putting their clients inside the Triumph 20. And as I touched on, it's extremely versatile and no doubt we're going to see this shoe become more and more successful in the years to come. The third shoe that comes into our top selection here for stable neutral as a category is the Brooks Ghost 15. Now, the Brooks Ghost 15 is a very honest, very reliable shoe, and it's been that way for a number of years now. The shoe itself is uh, very accessible, it comes in four widths, both men's and women's, so covering narrow right through to extra wide. Slightly heavier than some of the other competitors in this space on this stack height, but not too bad. I mean, 285 grams for a men's size 9 and 255 grams for a ladies size 7. And on a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop, 24 mil in the heel, 12 mil in the forefoot. But the shoe itself, as I touched on being so honest, you know what you're going to get with the Brooks Ghost year in, year out. Subtle iterations from one season to the next, but Brooks do not go back to the drawing board and re-engineer this shoe because they take a lot of learnings from one to the next and they want to keep it consistent and they want to keep you the runners out there have used this shoe to keep using this shoe so that's why they keep everything pretty similar um i always have a conversation with our, our new team members if someone starts in this industry with us it is such a great shoe if someone is looking for their first jogging shoe or they're getting into their jogging or they're starting their running journey the brooks goes 15 um, if it ticks the boxes from a from a stability category perspective 
being so versatile, being that it's available in so many widths, it just shows you that we can comfortably put someone in and we know we're gonna get a pretty good outcome, if not a great outcome. So how the Brooks Ghost made it into our top selection? Well, no surprises here. This one is a podiatrist favorite. A couple of factors is it is accessible, as we've touched on, available in lots of widths, but we often use this shoe as a bit of a baseline for a lot of uh, runners out there who are probably getting an orthotic for the first time, or as I've said, starting their running or training journey. We'll use this shoe as a bit of a benchmark to see how it feels and, and, and performs downstairs here at Sportitude Running. So with that in mind, um, it's one that we, we see a lot from our podiatrists, and if we need to alter anything with regards to the fit, feel, and function of, of the referrer, we will then throw in some other suggestions from the other brands. And the reason it's very popular with the referring partners is because there's not a lot of change from one season to the next. And if you're a podiatrist, continuity is a really big part of your referral program, and therefore Brooks have absolutely nailed it a number of years ago, and keeping that consistency from one season to the next makes life a lot easier for your referring partners. It is a 12 mil offset, and I touched on that a minute ago, but it is the higher end of what we see now in the running community. And it does have a mild rocker. Every performer tree has some form of a rocker through the forefoot, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as your Triumph or your Bondi, just to name a couple. Um, so therefore, what we see is the offset there is we go a little bit higher in the heel to toe drop. So therefore, to take some form of load off of the overall foot and more of it's towards the back half, being that calcaneus, Achilles insertion, and our calf muscle as a a overall performance load from entry mid stance to your release of your gait cycle. So Ghost 15, um, I'm pretty keen to see what Brooks do in this space. Will they use their DNA Loft version 3, which is that nitrogen infused midsole, or will they continue using DNA Loft version 2, which we have here on the Ghost 15? Only time will tell. Next shoe in our top selection is the Azix Cumulus 25. Now, probably my favorite Cumulus that I have ever ever seen, ever fitted in my whole entire shoe fitting career, which almost spans 17 years. The Cumulus itself in the 25th edition, 25th edition, pardon me, is very light on the foot. So coming in at 275 grams in a men's size 9, around 230 grams for a lady's size 7, and a pretty generous stack height, all things considered. It's around 37 in the heel and 29 on the forefoot for that offset of 8 millimeters. And why I really like the Gel Cumulus 25 is because it has a very snug, plush, responsive feel. It's sort of not a lot of cumulus in the past that you use those three words in the same sentence because we've had the Nimbus, which really covers off that really soft, high mileage running shoe from the ASICS family. And now with the Nimbus 25 being really a, a huge change in what that shoe was previously to where it is now, extremely soft on the foot. Not a lot of Nimbus wearers have sort of gravitated towards that feel and they've actually put them into the Cumulus 25 with a huge amount of success. Fantastic shoe for someone who's potentially a bit like the Ghost, looking to get into the running journey, fall into that stable neutral category. They may not, may not like the 12 mil offset, which the Ghost actually offers, and they may want something a little bit lower with a higher stack height. The Cumulus 25 would be a, a, a great uh, choice, part of me, for us to bring out and put on that person's foot. Now, it's early days yet. It's only been on the market now for a couple of months. So in terms of our conversations with the podiatrists out there, we have seen a number of referrers opt for this shoe for their clients. But however, it's still slowly um, growing in regards to its popularity with other podiatrists. So time will tell if that's going to be the case. But we have not had any issues whatsoever fitting orthotics inside this shoe Two widths, standard and wider in ladies, so B and a D, and a men's D and 2E, so very accessible again. And the other great thing about this shoe is ASICs are ever, or shouldn't say ever, but they're slightly improving their midsole geometries from one season to the next. Flight Flame Blast Plus being executed in this shoe with that um, gel cushioning at the heel, which is obviously making it nice and plush for your first point of entry for heel strikers. Very popular, very light, very versatile. Gel Cumulus 5 will remain to be very popular for the rest of 2023, no doubt about that. Okay, rounding up our top five today, on running Cloud Monster. Now, we could have had probably two or three other shoes make it into our top five, but we take all of our feedback, as I said in this review, from our staff members downstairs. A lot of customers that we fitted in this shoe here at Sportitude Running have found this shoe to be extremely successful. So, 
There we go. It had to make our top five. Now, stats-wise, six mil offset. We've got a 30 mil heel and a 24 forefoot. Pretty light, all things considered, for a, a sort of a top-end mileage shoe, coming in very similar to the Triumph, 275 grams in a men's size 9 and 230 grams for a ladies' size 7. Now, looking at this shoe, no surprises. It's very, very unique. Now, if you're not familiar with On, On have been a brand that's been around the place for about 10 years now and have been an extremely progressive brand, so much so they are one of the fastest growing brands in North America as we speak. So they're doing a lot of things right. Traditionally, Ons have been a little bit firm under the foot. So therefore, if you have tried them in the last few years and you think, I'll never put an On on my foot because they're too firm, I would like you to reconsider that because the Cloud Monster is a nice and soft plus shoe. Helion midsole, Cloud Tech foam, a little bit larger pod, so you get a little bit more compression through this midsole and being higher stack than what they have previously done before. So they've really conformed to what I suppose the industry is trend or how the industry is trending, offering sort of that max cushioned or more cushioned variety in their category. And now in all of that being said, it's not the softest shoe in the market, which is a good thing. It's not competing with your Bondi's out there or your Moors from New Balance. It's certainly more, I would say, having, I would throw this in the same conversations as your Clifton's, your Triumph 20s, maybe even your Nova Blast from ASIC. So it sort of does cross over a couple of different categories, and that's why it has made it into this top five. It's versatile. It's good for easy days. You can pick up the pace with that speedboard and get a nice snappy feel through the forefoot as well. The other thing to consider is the shoe itself only comes in one width, but it's very accessible. It's strange. I know it doesn't make sense, but we've had people um, from downstairs, well, our staff members downstairs, uh, one guy, Lockie, pretty narrow, pretty shallow foot, uses this shoe from time to time and it fits in quite well. Right up to uh, myself and I'm around a 2E, T to 2E width in, in varying shoes and I absolutely love how this shoe feels right to Ollie who's um, one of our podiatrists who works here and he is easily a 2E and he finds this shoe quite comfortable as well. So it is a very versatile shoe in regards to how many foot shapes can fit inside it. But I'd probably say it's been a bit hit and miss with some of our referrers with regards to orthotic success inside this shoe. And I think mainly due to the fact it's got a relatively minimalistic lacing structure, anatomical, slightly tilted towards the medial side, and it is hard to get a really true lockdown with an orthotic. Again, not saying that's the case for all orthotic uh, users out there. I know a number of people, myself included, who can comfortably put my orthotics in this and have great success. But just keep it in mind, it would be something you would certainly, or I would certainly recommend trying on. I wouldn't buy it off the shelf um, and then put my orthotic in there. You'd need to get it on your foot with that authority to see how it fits and feels. The other great thing about on running or on running cloud monster is that it uh, is a shoe that I feel has changed how on has presented itself to the market and a lot of runners out there gravitating towards this shoe and this brand purely and simply off the success of the Cloud Monster. Really looking forward to seeing what on do in the coming six months. I know they've got three super exciting shoes that are going to land the back half of 2023 and with regards to what they're going to do with the Monster, who knows? It's going to be hard to beat this shoe but I have got full faith in the engineering department that they're going to improve version two of this and it's pretty exciting stuff. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. That's our top five stable neutral shoes for the front half of 2023. Pretty exciting stuff coming in this category for the back end of 2023 uh, and in the front half of 2024. We've seen some exciting samples in this category. And the good thing about that is this category is growing and it's improving, it's progressing. So some exciting stuff coming. Guys, if you've got any questions about what we've presented, if you think we've missed any, let us know in the comment section below and why you like those shoes. We love hearing from you, the running community. If you want a bit more of a deeper dive, in every one of these shoes we have got individual links to those videos in the description below and if you haven't subscribed to our channel hit the red button stay notified and we'll keep knocking out shoe reviews like this or individual shoe reviews to keep you well informed to make all the right choices with your running shoe selection so until next time stay safe be kind to one another happy running and we'll see you out in the road take care